Hi guys, we're talking about the chapter of kinetic model of matter. Uh, it's the first chapter that we're covering in thermal physics. Alright, so break down the chapter, we'll be covering what are the three states of matter. You should be familiar with this. Uh, we're going to be discussing it a little bit in more detail. Uh, what exactly is kinetic model of matter? And then finally, uh, our PVT or pressure, uh, volume and temperature relationship in gases. Alright, so the states of matter. So first thing first, you need to remember that there are three states of matter, uh, solid, liquids and gases. Um, and that matter has mass and it takes up space. Now, um, over the next few slides, you are going to cover all the properties of each of these states of matter and why they are such because of the kinetic model of matter. Alright, so first we'll talk about the three states of matter. So these are things that you must remember. So all of these properties of each of the individual states of matter, you must memorize. Alright, so for solids, uh, they are usually, uh, they are fixed in shape and fixed in volume. They are usually hard and rigid. They are very highly dense and they are incompressible. For liquids, they usually have fixed volume but no fixed shape. Alright, so that's why they always assume the shape of the container that you put it in, the liquid. It means if you put it in a squarish container, it will take the shape of a square. If you put it in a circular container like a beaker, then it will take the shape of a beaker. All right. It is also highly dense, quite highly dense, and it is slightly compressible, but uh, almost uh, for all our purposes, uh, is we should say that it's not compressible. It's not easily compressible. For gases, they have no fixed shape and volume. That's why they will often occupy because of the fit, no fixed shape. They will assume the shape of the container that it is in. If you put it in a cubic uh, room, they will occupy the shape of the room. All right. It also has no fixed volume because it will occupy whatever whole volume that you put it in. So if you put it in a sphere, then it will occupy the entirety of the sphere. All right. So that's why no fixed shape, no fixed volume. All right. It's very low dense, low, low density. It's very compressible. So these are the few properties and all of this you must memorize and know. So we'll move on to what exactly is kinetic model of matter. So the kinetic model of matter states that all matter is made up of all these tiny little particles. So this is the model of matter that we're talking about. So all matter is made up of these tiny little particles and they are always, these particles are always continuously moving. Now that's why it's called kinetic model of matter. Uh, the word kinetic comes from uh, your study of kinetic energy. Uh, you know that kinetic energy has to do with motion. So uh, what kinetic model of matter states? That tiny particles that make up matter will always be in continuous motion. All right. Now this is not just a model of matter. It's not something somebody made up. Uh, with advances in technology, we can actually now map or uh, have a look at atoms at an atomic scale. So I'm just going to show you a quick video of what it looks like atoms on germanium surface right you can actually see that the atoms are actually moving about can you see the bright spots are the atoms so the atoms are actually continuously moving if i look at it on a silicon these are you see all these small little dots here these are the surface of silicon these are just the random silicon atoms that are on the surface itself, on top of the atoms. So you can see that actually this, can you see that these atoms are actually moving about? So even in the solids, all these atoms are always continuously moving. So kinetic model of matter. And we use this uh, model of matter to then describe uh, certain prop, uh, this describe the properties that we discussed earlier. So basically these properties that we discussed earlier, we will use kinetic model of matter to explain why it is so. So let's have a quick look at the kinetic model of matter, solids for solids. So for solids, in terms of all the tiny particles or the molecules that make up of a solid, we say that the distance between molecules, these are all the things that we have to remember for solids. Huh? For distance between molecules, they are packed very, very closely together with almost no spaces in between them. And between each of these molecules there exist forces holding them together with one another so we call them intermolecular forces and these forces are very strong in solids all right so for the term to describe 
what the molecule is doing, the motion of the molecules, each of the individual molecules or atoms in a solid are vibrating about a fixed position. So if you imagine this is a particle, let's say a solid particle of uh, gold, so the particle will actually just vibrate about the fixed position. All right. In terms of arrangement of molecules in a solid or atoms in a solid, they are regular, regularly spaced. So we use these descriptions from kinetic model of matter to describe the physical properties that we have. So we recall what we learned about um, the physical properties of solid. They are incompressible and they are highly dense. So then we use the distance between molecules to explain why. Why are they incompressible? Why are they highly dense? It's because the molecules are already packed very closely together. That's why they have high density and they are also incompressible because well, they are already so close to one another, you, it's not possible for you to compress them even more closer together. Um, why they are hard and rigid and they are fixed in volume is because they have strong intermolecular forces of attraction, meaning they, it's unlikely for the molecules to move apart from one another because of the intermolecular strong forces of attraction between them. So that's why they are usually hard and rigid, meaning rigid meaning they will just stay in this shape. Fixed volume because if I try to pull them apart, right, then it will take a lot, a lot of force to pull them apart. That's why most solids are in fixed volume. Um, the, their state, their motion, how the molecules are moving, the molecules do not move, they just vibrate about a fixed position. That's why the shape retain is that it, the solids have a fixed shape. Uh, arrangement is quite regular, that's why they have also have a fixed shape. So all of these properties of solid are in kinetic model of matter, the, the distance, the forces, the motion and arrangement, all of this you must know. And you must know which reason to quote to explain all the different properties that you see in solids. Alright, so we'll quickly run through because the exercise is about the same for liquid as well. So the slight difference between um, solid and liquid is that while solid the distance is very close together liquids are also close together but they are not as close as solids are so this is slightly further apart if solids are very close to one another then liquids are just slightly further apart so there still exist strong intermolecular forces of attraction between all the molecules however not as strong as in solids uh, the motion for solid it was vibrating about a fixed position but in liquids the molecules or atoms are allowed to slide past one another. So the molecules are allowed to slide past one another so they can rotate and move around. All right, the arrangement of the molecules in liquid are random. All right, random or sometimes we just call it irregular. So all of this would then explain this. Close together, so therefore liquids are usually not easily compressible and they are quite dense. Uh, because of the strong intermolecular forces of attraction, they have a roughly fixed volume. But because they can slide past one another, that's why your liquids in general don't have fixed shape and they assume the shape of the container. So because of the random nature, uh, random arrangement in the liquid, that's why it can uh, assume the shape of the container. Whatever container that you are putting it in, it will assume the shape. If it was a square base, then it will just take up the whole square area. Alright. Same for gases now, we'll discuss very quickly. Um, gases are very, very far apart as compared to solids and liquid. The forces of attraction between all the molecules in the liquid are very weak. So they have weak intermolecular forces of attraction. The motion is random and at high speeds. All right. The arrangement is also random or just irregular arrangement. So there's no fixed arrangement. So because of this, um, in gases, gases are quite easily compressible and low dense because the molecules are far apart. So be, that's why they are compressible because the molecules are so far apart, I can push them in quite easily. So that's why they are compressible. Forces of attraction, weak. That's why they have no fixed volume. That's why they are also compressible. Random and at, at high speeds, that's why you have no fixed shape. It will assume the shape of, contain, of the container. Alright, so use, use the correct um, kinetic model of matter property to describe the physical property of either of the solid, liquid or gases. Alright, just a quick picture so that you have an idea. Solids, liquid, gases, the distance between the particles will increase. Solid will be very close to one another. Liquid will be much f slightly further apart. Gas is very, very far apart. In terms of the forces, 
alright, the forces in the gas, forces of intermolecular forces of attraction for the gas is the weakest, then it gets progressively stronger as it goes to liquid and then even stronger as in solid. Now, so how do we know that actually this kinetic model of matter really is how, mod, how matter really works, how these tiny particles really work? So we give credit to a botanist called Robert Brown. He was one of the first, he was the first one to uh, prove that all particles are moving randomly in random motion as described in kinetic model of matter. So what he did was he uh, was a botanist, he had pollens flying around and he had a light uh, shining through the pollens and he realized that the pollens were moving in this strange kind of jittery kind of motion. So he correctly, he posited that actually the pollen grains that he see are moving randomly in such a manner due to continuous bombardment by invisible particles. So these invisible particles we now know as air particles. So these invisible particles are continually hitting from all direction. That's why these uh, pollen particles will move in quite a random motion. So I just have a quick video to show you how Brownian motion actually looks like a good simulation. So you have a look. Right, so if you imagine the white color particle as the pollen particle, then actually all this as a solid, uh, as the liquid or the air particles around it, it's continually moving and touching it. That's why your pollen particles move in this kind of jittery manner. So that is Brownian motion for you. So I have another quick video. Under a microscope, they catch the light and appear to glimmer. But why do they randomly dance around? So you can see all the big either smoke particles. Yeah, so you see air particles are continually hitting because of the random motion of the air particles or the fluid particles. That's why it will cause the smoke particles to continually move in this weird jittery kind of fashion. So uh, Robert Brown, he is the first one to discover it. Um, just for you to take note, uh, Brownian motion can also be observed in anything, bigger particles such as pollen or dust or smoke, as long as it's suspended in a fluid. Now, a fluid is either gas or liquid, so just take note. Uh, the next time you see the word fluids in the terms of physics context, then we're talking about gas or liquids, not only just liquid. Alright, so one important takeaway and key point is this. When the temperature of anything is increased, the particles that make up that object, be it solid, liquid, or gas, they will start to move faster. All right. Conversely, when the temperature is decreased, then the particles will move more slowly. All right. Um, so this is a very, very important point. You will start. You will see me quote this again and again and again and again throughout the whole of thermal physics. The higher the temperature, the molecules will gain kinetic energy, and they will consequently be moving faster. So temp higher temperature, molecules that make up the object move faster and uh, the kinetic energy increase. Alright, so what is the impact of having a higher temperature on Brownian motion? Brownian motion basically is the random motion of the smoke particles, the jittery motion. So when temperature increase, again, the kinetic energy of the molecules are higher, they move faster. So we are talking not about the pollen or the smoke particles, we're talking about the air molecules or rather the fluid molecules. So because these invisible fluid molecules are now moving faster and they will also hit the uh, smoke molecules more frequently and more forcefully. So imagine if my smoke particles were just moving just like that due to the random nature of the heating of it. So when I increase the temperature, because it's being hit more frequently, but because the molecules are moving faster, and also each hit is going to be harder because they are moving faster, so it will move even more randomly and even more jittery than before. So in terms of Brownian motion, when you increase the temperature, you expect that the molecules instead of uh, the pollen or the smoke particles start moving like that, it will start to move more randomly like such. So smoke particles will move faster and they will change direction more frequently. So the higher the temperature, this is the effect on Brownian motion. Alright, so we come to the last part, which is basically our biggest one. Um, 
for the combined science student, actually, this is where the end of the chapter is. All right, you don't have to go into 9.3. For pure physics students, uh, you will have to uh, uh, follow through with this. So, pressure in gases. All right, so first few things that you need to recall for your our discussion of pressure in gases. One, pressure is force per unit area. So, you must remember that. Two, what we just learned, the higher the temperature, the higher the kinetic energy of the molecules that make up the object. Of course, then, the higher the speed of all these molecules or particles. So, you must continue to remind yourself of these two points. Then, our discussion will be fruitful for the next one. Alright. So, let's talk about pressure in gases. So, we just learned or we just recall that pressure is actually force per unit area. Alright. Pressure is force per unit area. Uh, in terms of gas pressure, why is there gas pressure? Gas pressure is because of the random motion of the air particles. Because the air particles hit the side of the container, it exerts a force on this side of the container. The total force of all the particles uh, exerted by the particles, you divide it by the area of this side, you will get, you will get the gas pressure. However, there are two quantities or two effects that you have to take note of for you to be able to approve, fully appreciate the force that is being exerted. One, how strong each impact is. So the force is, um, the, these two factors will affect the force that is being felt on the container. So how fast each molecule is moving will impact how much force it exerts per impact. Now, also, how frequently the particles are hitting this side of the uh, the side of the container will then also increase the force felt. So the force is dependent on these two. So the higher the frequency, the higher the force felt. The higher each impact of the force is overall, the higher the force felt on the side of the container. And therefore, because I have a higher force, higher force, higher force here, I will have a greater pressure because pressure is force per unit area higher force higher pressure now so that now that we talked about the forces and the pressure it becomes useful for us to talk about the relationship between three um three physical quantities of gas pressure volume and temperature now it becomes quite difficult for us to discuss all three of them at the same time so i rather that we discuss each of only two of them while keeping one of them constant so first, we explore the pressure against temperature relationship or gas. Provide uh, and and we must take note that for this, the volume is constant. The next, when we uh, examine the volume temperature relationship, then we must keep the pressure constant. And then in pressure volume, then we must keep the temperature constant. So because it's difficult to to examine all three together, we just focus on only two while one is being kept constant. Then it becomes simpler for us to examine what kind of relationship they have. So first off, let's talk about pressure versus temperature. Now, this whole relationship is talking about what happens to a gas when I increase the temperature of the gas. So if I have a gas stuck in a container, I heat it up, then of course the temperature of this gas is going to increase. Now, recall that at the start of this section, I told you there were two things that were important for you to remember. One is pressure equals to force over area. The other one is the higher the temperature, the higher the kinetic energy of the molecules and the higher the speed the molecules which we're traveling at. So at higher temperatures, when I heat it up, at higher temperatures, the molecules will be moving at faster speed because they have a far higher kinetic energy. Because they are moving faster, these air molecules will then be hitting the walls of the container per impact more forcefully and more frequently. All right? Because they are moving faster, they will, each hit will be harder and, each, and because they are moving faster, they will hit each of the side more frequently. So now, for these two, we must see these two points here for you to be able to get one mark in a normal question as such. If you only quote more forcefully, and you left out more frequently, you will not get the mark. You must say more forcefully and more frequently. Because you hit more forcefully and more frequently, you increase the force. Uh, each uh, the you increase the force of the molecule on the wall. And since pressure equals to force over area, the first point I told you to remember, 
this will result in an increase in the gas pressure of the container. So the higher the temperature, the higher the gas pressure. Now, all you need to do to describe what happens when I cool a gas is to just give the opposite word for each of these words that I circled here. So at lower temperature, the gas molecules will have lower speed because they have lower kinetic energy. Because of that, they will heat less forcefully because they are moving slower and less frequently. Therefore, there's less force on the wall. Since pressure equals to force over area, the, there's a decrease in the gas pressure. So, you will always, they will like to ask this kind of question, what happens, to temp, what happens to pressure when I increase the temperature of a gas? So, all you need to do is to quote and you cannot miss any of the words that I underlined for you to get all the marks. In terms of graphically, how will it look like? So the higher the temperature, the higher the pressure. So they have a direct proportional relationship. So if I were to plot a P versus T graph, then it will be a straight line because it's directly proportional. Alright, so that is PT done. The biggest one. So let's talk about volume temperature relationship in a gas. What happens to the volume of a gas if I were to increase the temperature of the gas? So the setup is simple. I have a, they have a colored water droplet. Lah. So this whole area here is the volume, inclusive of this small part. So if, I were to, if the water do droplet were to go up, then I will increase the volume of this gas is actually increased. So um, they say that, you know, you can put your hand here and you can increase the temperature of the gas, lah, but for our purposes, we just say the temperature of the gas is increased. We try and examine what happens to the volume. So, a lot of words. You got to memorize all of them. Alright, so when air is heated up, this will cause the temperature. And you will start seeing the same kind of argument happening over and over again. I increase the temperature. The air molecules will be moving faster because they have higher kinetic energy. Because of this, they will heat the container of the walls. The inner container of the walls more forcefully. And more frequently because uh, pressure is forced over area and the force of the container is increased because more forcefully more frequently therefore gas pressure increase now internal gas pressure is the gas pressure inside the container external is just due to uh, your atmospheric pressure because now my internal gas pressure has increased therefore it is now greater than my external gas pressure and because of that the force on the inner portion of the container is greater than the outer portion of the container. So if this is your container, the inner portion will feel a greater force and if this part here is movable like a piston, then the force on the inner side is greater than the outer side. You got a resultant force upwards. That's why this whole fella will move up. Alright, because there's a greater force on the inner side than the outer side i have an outward resultant force therefore i have an outward motion now does it mean that it will continually move forever for as long as my temperature has increased what if my temperature only increased by let's say one degree celsius will it continually infinitely volume will increase all the way all right so there's a continuation to this. Huh? The volume does not increase infin infinitely. So eventually when the volume of the container is increased because of the increased temperature, I got a decrease in the number of molecules per unit volume. So my volume has increased, but no gas has entered and no gas has escaped. So the number of gas molecules remain the same. So the number of gas molecules remain the same, but my volume has now increased, which means this number of molecule per unit volume will now be smaller. Because of that, because now I got a bigger volume, the molecules have now had to travel further to hit the container because the volume has increased. So it will hit less frequently. Do take note, uh, it is not less forcefully. They will, because they have to travel further, the container will receive less hits, but each hit is the same amount of force. All right, but overall, because of the less frequently the, the decreased frequency of hits, I will have a, I will feel a slow decrease in the force of the inner portion of the container. So because of that, initially I had a higher pressure inside here, right? Higher internal pressure. So eventually, as the volume is increased, 
then my pressure will start to decrease, decrease until the internal pressure and the external pressure becomes the same again, then the container wall will stop moving. Now, it is the same kind of argument that we'll see again. Everything that is circled here will be the inverse of what is happening. So instead of being heated, I have it cool. This will decrease the temperature. So when I have a decreased temperature, the molecules will move slower because they are lower Ke. They will heat less forcefully and less frequently. So the force on the wall will decrease because pressure is forced per unit area. Gas pressure will decrease. So now my internal gas pressure is lower than the external gas pressure. The force on the inner portion is less than the outer portion. There is an inward resultant force resulting in an inward motion. So when my temperature decreases, my volume will decrease. So this is the explanation. If they ask you what happens to volume when temperature is decreased, this whole chunk here will be your explanation. So if they ask you then in the question, what happens? Why does the volume start de uh, stop decreasing after a while? So the volume will decrease. Because the volume has decreased, now I've got the same number of molecules contained in a smaller volume. So the, the number of molecules per unit volume has increased. So because I have an increase in the number of molecules per unit volume, I have a, the molecules will hit the wall with more frequency. More frequently. Again, not forcefully. Yeah? So this will overall increase the force because I my molecules are hitting it more frequently. Increase the force since pressure equals the force over area. The internal pressure will decrease. And then once uh, will increase, sorry. So once the internal pressure and the external pressure is the same, then the container wall will stop moving. So this is the explanation for when. Why is it that the volume eventually stops decreasing or increasing after a while when the temperature decreases? Alright. So uh, just a common question type. Huh? Uh, this is what a lot of students will make mistakes on. So just take note, uh, the same explanation apply, higher temperature, higher Ke or molecule, higher speed. So therefore, this will eventually cause the volume to increase because of the higher gas pressure. So therefore, there will be a lower number of molecule per unit volume and you get a less frequent collision. Now, what is the thing that is uh, confusing students? Uh, when I have a temperature increase here, when I have a temperature increase, I expect the volume to increase. So my situation will change from 1 to 2 when temperature increase. All right? Because the volume will be more. All right? So uh, eventually the force on the piston will be the same because eventually they will be the same pressure at the atmospheric pressure. That's when the container or the piston, this volume will stop increasing. So same pressure means same force on the piston overall, internally and externally. But this one has a lower temperature compared to this one. So number one has a lower temperature compared to two because my temperature has increased. So because two has a higher temperature, it means that each of the heat, because the molecules are moving faster, will be more forceful compared to one. But however, the pressure, the force it must remain the same, right? So that means each of, even though each heat is more forceful, it happens less frequently. So overall, the force felt on the container remains the same. Alright, so VT relationship um, is proportional. Higher temperature means higher pressure. Higher, uh, no, higher temperature means in a higher results in a higher increased volume. So in a VT graph, it will be directly proportional, straight line. Higher temperature, higher volume. Alright, we come to the last one. PV relationships. What happens to Volume, uh, what happens to pressure when I decrease or increase the volume of the gas? So, situation is pressure inside the gas. I have a piston. I can slowly move in and out to increase or decrease the volume. So, in a PV relationship, again, same things are discussed. When the volume is decreased, the number of air molecules per unit volume will increase because my molecules are now all trapped in a smaller volume. So, number of mo air molecules per unit volume increase. Therefore, they will heat more frequently. Note that it is not more forcefully, not uh, more forcefully because the temperature hasn't changed. This, because they heat more frequently, this will cause an increase in the force felt on the container. Since pressure equals to force over area, I have an increase in gas pressure. 
so when I increase the volume then all I need to do is switch the words around in the air in circle when the volume on the gas is increased number of air molecules per unit volume will decrease therefore they will heat less frequently this causes an increase in uh, sorry a decrease in the force that is felt therefore since pressure equals to force over area I will, res I will feel a decrease in the gas pressure so so just take note that when the volume is increased the pressure is decreased so it is an inversely proportional relationship so if I were to draw a graph P is inversely proportional to uh, V so P is directly proportional to 1 over V it will be P if I plot P versus 1 over V then it will be di directly proportional if I plot P versus V then this will be the, what the graph will look like which makes sense because the higher the volume imagine if I increase the volume infinitely high then the pressure that I feel will be very very small because the molecules have to travel so far to be able to hit of this to hit the volume of the container which has now increased by a lot so therefore the pressure that is felt is lower so the the further I increase the volume the lower my pressure so as compared to over here if I decrease the volume to infinitely small values almost close to zero then the pressure will shoot up immensely because I am now containing all the molecules in a very very small area volume that's why they will hit very very frequently that's why the pressure uh, force will shoot up infinitely high and therefore the pressure will shoot up infinitely high because pressure is force over area so this is what it looks like all right so with that we have examined all the pvt relationships so just to for a quick summary kinetic model of matter you need to know the properties of solid liquid gases you need to know that what are the prop uh, what are the Things that kinetic model of matter say about the about the particles in solid, liquid, and gases. Then the evidence for kinetic model of matter is provided by Brownian motion. So an increased temperature will result in the particles having a higher Ke and moving faster. Then finally, at the last part, we we examine the PVT relationships within these three properties. So uh, you need to be able to quote all of those information and the words. You shouldn't miss them, right? If you want to get the full marks. All right, that's all.